Hello you cheeky chappies. We are here in Funchal, the jewel, some might say, of Madeira Island. And we're here to answer 10 questions. So these are the questions that have been bubbling away at the back of your brains and have made their way very slowly, I might say, through to your frontal mounted buccal cavities to be uttered out into the world and for us to hear. And so we thought what we would do is just answer those questions because otherwise there won't be a video. And it seems appropriate looking at the sky today. We start with the first question. Madeira weather. So what's it like? You can see right now, all the clouds around. There's been a little spot of rain earlier here. We're in October. What I would say is uh, Madeira is known for its temperate climate. Okay, so we're pretty near the equator, if you believe. And so the island is, one of the reasons it's popular, is just because the weather throughout the year is pretty nice. So, you know, you could pretty much come here any time. You come here in September. Um, if you come here any time in the summer months, you're probably going to get anywhere up to about 25 degrees during the day. And it's going to be quite pleasant. You can normally get a nice little breeze. So it's not like, uh, it's not like the Greek islands, for instance, in terms of heat. But still, you could come in the winter time even. In winter, still, it's quite mild. You're going to get sort of 15 to 20 degrees most days. You're going to get more rain. Well, you know, come see, come sir. That's how it's going to go. November to uh, February tends to be the sort of slightly more rainy months. If you want to find out where the uh, warmest and driest place in the country is, then you're going to head to Ponte do Sol. That's down on the west coast. And yeah, that tends to be slightly drier than everywhere else, a little bit warmer. Of course, things are changing. Uh, this year has been a little bit different. Uh, we missed the heat, which is uh, quite nice, but uh, people are saying it's getting up to about 38, 39 degrees centigrade. And what's unusual here is that it's really, uh, really humid. It doesn't normally get that way. So uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe that's a, a new pattern. Hopefully not, but we'll see. So the second question is, Madeira's top attractions. Uh, what to see when you come here? Well, my first recommendation is what brought us here, and that's the Levadas. And we've talked about this before. You've got two or 3,000 kilometers worth of these water channels that snake all the way around the island. And for most of them, you can walk along them and you've got breathtaking scenery most of the time. Great hiking. Uh, you need a bit of a head for heights, I would say. So you've got the Levadas, you've got festivals, and the island puts on lots of festivals, flower festivals, wine festivals, there's some music too. Um, and in general, some of the smaller towns too, they tend to put on their own festivals, food festivals, etc. Uh, not particularly for the tourists, just like they like little festivals. So you can come for those. Got a little boat going out to sea. Uh, they might be going out to uh, look at some dolphins and whales because that's a big thing here uh, just off the coast. Generally, you're not quite guaranteed to see dolphins and whales but um, you stand a very good chance and actually most companies will offer that if you don't see them first time round you get another ticket to come free of charge again. You get to swim in volcanic pools here too because it was a volcanic island and there's not so much on the beach front here which we'll talk about later but you can swim in volcanic pools by the sea it's quite lovely there's uh by the way it's christopher columbus a visitor to the islands If you've got green fingers, uh, well, first of all, I'd take some antibiotics for that. Uh, but secondly, also, uh, you might be interested in, well, you can look around, see how lush and green it is. It's a very green, verdant island. And there's the lots of botanical gardens here. So if that is your thing, 
you're going to be spoilt rotten. And of course, if you're staying in some of the hotels, have really extensive gardens of their own. Uh, so yes, so it's a highlight for a lot of people. If you like beaches, uh, you can come, I would say, to Porto Santo, which is an island off the coast. It's about two hours away on a ferry, and that has uh, a really long beach, nine kilometers long, one of the best in Europe. But on the island itself, not so much. We'll talk about beaches later. And of course, something that people will do when they come in here, they come to Funchal for the day, they'll jump on the cable car, the Tellerifico, and they'll take a ride up to Mont. It'll be a lovely view of the whole bay. And they might, uh, who knows, take the famous wicker basket toboggans all the way down. But that's what to do when you come to Madeira. Next question. What are the top hikes on the island? So yeah, so people come here for hiking. It really is pretty amazing. So probably the number one hike on the island is PR1. It's Pico Arrero to Pico Ruivo. So the number one hike is PR1. Pico Arrero to Pico Ruivo. It's graded as difficult, uh, and it is. So we were on it the other day. Uh, it is spectacular. It's been made more famous probably by people taking selfies on Instagram. Don't let that put you off. It is pretty spectacular. It's 10.8 kilometers long, but it's gonna take, it's about five hour walking. You need a head for heights. That's one of the reasons why it's difficult. And also the big climb at the end, you get halfway and you think that wasn't so bad. It's only when you get back to the beginning again, that's when you realize it's a little bit difficult on the way back, a lot of climbing. So you wanna get out on the Stairmaster before you try that one. Uh, you can also, it's quite, popular to do that at sunrise and there's organized trips for that or you can just hire a car or you can get up there yourself watch the sunrise come up very nice it's not too busy then uh, like a lot of things in Madeira it's got more busy re in recent years and so some of these Lavados will get a little bit more populated another one I would suggest this is a couple of heights you can do along uh, San Lorenzo which is a sort of a peninsula on the island. And again, there's, uh, there's a lovely walk uh, right out to sea. You're gonna find um, there's no shade on that one. So make sure you bring a you know, sun hat or lots of sun cream. Cause it's a couple of hours walk and um, yeah, there's gonna be no shade, but it is pretty spectacular. Got, um, Caldero Verde, which is the green crater. So that's a hard walk. It'll take you about seven hours to do the full thing, 11.9 kilometers. Uh, there's a few different walks you can do from there. So you can always do shorter ones and walk back, especially if you've uh, parked your car up there. So with most of these, again, you can always do a little circuit and take a shorter walk. Rabasal, the 25 fountains is probably what you're going to be offered first of all if you're doing a tour or you're here on a ship it is quite nice to be honest but it's it tends to be oversubscribed unless you can get there early in the morning you're going to spend a lot of time just standing one side letting people pass and to be honest there are much better walks um, and ones where you're just going to have a bit more peace and quiet a bit more time to yourselves if you want a really easy one and 
we haven't really got a head for heights. Um, we can do Paradise Valley, which is quite short. We've done a video on that before. It's on the Levada uh, Cerro de Fayal. Uh, it's only quite short. You can get a bus at the beginning, get a bus at the end. It's nice. Give it a go. Next question. What are the top beaches on Madeira? First of all, I'm putting this out here. Uh, Madeira is not a beach destination. Okay, so if you're coming for that, I would pick somewhere else. However, there are beaches here. Now, I did mention a couple of things. Uh, there are two sandy beaches here. Well, golden sand beaches on the island. Uh, there are artificial beaches. And that's one at Mexico, which is the old capital, and one at Calieta. And they're both on the south side of the islands. Yeah, both quite nice. If you want the best golden beach, or a genuine one, again, you take the ferry over to Porto Santo, maybe spend a day or two days over there. You've got nine kilometers of beautiful sand. So they're just taking down an exhibition here. I'm messing with my sound. They obviously didn't get the memo. Otherwise, there are some beaches around, but you're going to find they're pebbly or they're black sand. The nearest one to Funchal is uh, Pra Formosa. And you'll pass that if you walk along the front. You take a walk along to Camaro de Lobos. You're going to pass that. It's really quite nice. Uh, beware the uh, waves there. There's a little bit of an undercurrent there. And there's a few cafes along the way you can sit, look out to sea. That's quite pleasant. But yeah, if you're coming for a beach holiday, uh, pick somewhere else. This is really hiking, hiking country. Next question. What to eat in Madeira? What a traditional foods you got to try. So there's a few staples that you're going to see everywhere. This is Cathedral by the way. Again if you've seen any of our videos you'll have seen this uh, more than once. So Ashpatada is the first one. And you'll probably, actually, I wonder if anyone's eating it down here. Let's have a look. So people bring out a tall skewer to your table, upon which are cubes of grilled beef. Do I see anyone eating it? I'd like to point it out if I can, but I don't see anybody. Okay. Yeah, so it's a beef dish generally served with uh, milo frito, which is uh, fried corn, little cubes of fried corn. Very nice. Uh, sometimes there'll also be bolo de cacao, which is uh, a bread with garlic butter inside. Very tasty, I have to say. Uh, espada is the next one. Sounds a little bit like espatada, but espada is fish dish. So this is made of the black scabbard fish, which they catch at night. Uh, you can see the black scabbard fish if you go to the fish market during the day. It's a really ugly looking thing. It's like a big black eel with horrendous teeth. Um, tastes very nice though. Tends to be served with a sauce made from uh, passion fruit and bananas. It sounds like it shouldn't work but it does work. It's lovely. Other things you could eat is lapas or limpets. Now you might be like me and uh, turn your nose up at that. Uh, but uh, people who are into seafood uh, like it. They're grilled. It's got uh, garlic and butter in them. Uh, best to be eaten hot because they go a little bit uh, rubbery if you leave them too long. But uh, my other half, the other half of Living Walks, uh, loves them. Uh, you see Prego advertised quite a lot. Again, this is like a steak sandwich. 
and that's generally people are eating that for lunch quite a lot probably one of the cheapest meals you can get and fairly kind of um, reliable if you find yourself going to the nuns valley you might wish to partake in chestnuts yeah so it's not just roast chestnuts which actually you'll see all the time down the front here they make chestnuts into everything uh, liqueur cakes soups everything you can imagine now next question what to pack what to wear all those crucial questions well okay if you're coming here for the Levadas you're coming here for hiking you kind of know what to pack don't you really I need something rainproof that you can throw on because the weather can change particularly if you're high up you want some good boots or walking shoes obviously you probably want a nice base layer you get hot get cold something you can whip off nice and easily uh, in general whatever you're doing here although it hasn't got the direct sun that um, or the harsh sun that maybe the Greek islands has uh, you should bring along plenty of sun cream and a hat or something like that uh, because yes you'll get burnt quite easily sunglasses goes without saying dress code people tend to be sort of smart casual here you can probably see already just during the day people are fairly smart but not overly so so you know nice dress shirt for the men dress too for the ladies and if you're like us and you're extreme minimalists in terms of travel I mean basically we just travel with a tiny little under the seat bag on Ryanair or EasyJet so we kind of favour things that can be washed and dried very easily so sometimes you know sort of technical fabrics and stuff is quite handy cuts down on your luggage but that is my suggestion for what to bring next question so when to visit okay when to go to Madeira and this is separate from uh, the weather issue I would say anytime well, you can enjoy yourself here any time of the year I say the it's got a really nice climate it's near the equator so it's quite moderate temperate Chaps letting me through, that's nice. Most popular times are around sort of Christmas and New Year. Uh, one, because the fireworks are world famous, and they really do Christmas here very well. Oh, in fact, actually, look, they're already starting to put up the lights for Christmas here. And what is it? It's uh, late October. So, yes, they take it seriously. It is beautiful actually it's the favorite time of year most popular it gets busy here I mentioned festivals before and they have lots of festivals they have lots of uh, athletics competitions they have marathons and ultra marathons and uh, mountain biking challenges and ocean swims all sorts so there's lots of opportunity for people to come here be entertained but likewise it also means that at certain times of year when it gets quite busy so of course if you want to avoid the crowds if you want to enjoy lower prices that includes hotels and car hire which we'll talk about later uh, yeah maybe come off season so right now I'm in October it's probably around what is it like the 24th or something and it's actually fairly quiet and again you can see already starting to put up the Christmas lights because the whole town 
is covered in them so it takes a while to put them up so they're starting early let's cross the square there's a town hall here oh just up that road and pointing up there you got about 200 yards up there past the university entrance there's a little what would it be oh yeah a Madeira wine house distillery I'll just wait for the bells um, pop in there get a free tasting uh, three wines so dry medium and sweet very nice free so uh, do take advantage of that don't do it first thing in the morning you might want a nap good suggestion funny enough is if you were to fly out here January the 1st you're going to find that um, flights are suddenly really cheap because obviously it's a, an unpopular time to travel anyway but also once people have seen the fireworks they're all rushing home they're all jumping on their planes back and obviously the flight companies have to fill the planes coming out here so prices tend to be pretty low so that's a good little travel hack for you we might head down the front so another question shall we why is Madeira so green okay well it is if you've seen any pictures of it it's lush uh, and there's a good couple of reasons first of all it's a temperate climate here we're pretty near the equator believe it or not and so it's quite warm all year round it gets a little bit of rainfall it's not immune to the touch of precipitation a couple of things too so eucalyptus trees uh, were planted here in the past uh, mainly because they're fast growing and a good source of uh, wood they came from uh, Australia of course is where they come from we all know that um, and the root system in those is very good for holding on to the earth preventing erosion and holding on to water so it tends to hold on to water even though it might not be raining another thing you get too it's a little silver forest here so that covers probably 20 percent of the island and it's uh, very high up and of course often there's a cloud layer over the top and what do clouds do well they condense on things such as the leaves of the Laurasolvis silver trees so there we are so that holds a lot of water water runs down the trunks into the soil so even if it's not raining Madeira is collecting a lot of water and also because it's a volcanic island there's huge big areas underground where the great voids where basically molten lava has you know, solidified and then the lava inside has flowed away leaving big spaces so this means that throughout the year water is trickling in and filling these kind of underground reservoirs and even in the dry months it starts to trickle out it's not being replenished but so we still have water running in the Levadas and on the streams, keeping the island green. How nice. Okay, a couple of last questions here. Now, shall I go along the front? It might be a little noisy. Actually, I'm going to go up here. Let's go to the municipal park. Next question. Do I need a car well okay you don't need a car in fact so how many times have we been here I, I can tell you 15 20 actually this is the first time that we've decided to hire a car and the reason is for a lot of the time uh, public transport is fine um, this service is most way around the island lots of things you want to see are probably nearby uh, if you want to do hikes 
you can do organized hikes and there's nothing wrong with that in fact sometimes going on an organized hike is great because apart from anything else their vehicles are much higher on the road than a car so as you're driving around the island you actually see more out the window buy a normal higher car you're going to be low down sometimes you just don't see over the sides of the roads so get great views you get commentaries by local guides who know lots of things very nice um, and again the bus service will take you to a lot of places where you can just do hikes yourself so so far we've not had the need to but this time there's a few places on the north side we want to investigate just particularly also just because of the time we've got here so it's time retreats too sometimes as a thing if you haven't got a lot of time yeah okay you can get a car um, again getting one in peak season is either going to be tricky or it's going to be very expensive I mean right now in October low season I've seen a few for around about 22 euros a day that's pretty good um, and that is that is pretty low in winter times I'm I dare think what you're going to be paying but uh, anyway do you need a car the answer I think is no not really oh by the way if you are coming here um, you're probably going to end up with a manual car make sure you have a little practice of your heel starts and your clutch control because the roads here I mean it seems flat here as soon as you get off the front you got lots of hills all over the place so uh, yep practice those hill starts okay let's have a last question and we'll finish off up in the municipal park we might stop for a coffee because that is what we do where is Madeira okay so Madeira is part of Portugal but it's not part of the Portuguese landmass it's a Portuguese island it's actually it's closer to Africa than it is to Europe let's go up here I've got some uh, stalls on today so it's 434 nautical miles off the Moroccan coast you almost fly over it but not quite if you're flying from the UK going down to the Canary Islands uh, you pass it on the way down more or less so yeah it's right out to sea and again it's pretty near the equator that's why it's got this lovely temperature and it's saving grace for most of the time anyway it's a little breeze you get off the front keeps the temperature very nice let's come up here and so those are the 10 burning questions we've been asked we might follow this up with another series of questions that uh, perhaps weren't so sensible because we do get asked some very strange things watch out for that one until we talk again just, just embarrass this poor girl <laughs> and so bless her until the next time take care safe travels